Hey guys, it's Tolopan here for a uh, Digimon video today. Uh, BT6 pre-release is coming up for the US this weekend and so I just wanted to go through the set and uh, talk about some cards to look out for in your games and uh, some tips for deck building, gameplay for sealed format, all that good stuff because you know there are pulse mons on the line and everybody wants their foil pulse mons. Uh, I won't be talking about these cards. Uh, they show up because they're in the uh, anniversary packs, but they're not actually part of the set, so you won't see any of these cards in your pre-release. Uh, not much to talk about the babies. Um, if you're lucky, you'll see somewhere maybe around two to four babies. It's very rare that I've ever seen anybody get five, but it does happen. And uh, obviously in a pre-release setting, you'll be able to uh, digivolve any color onto any color, as long as it is one level above, etc. Um, there's not much to talk about these babies. They're okay. Um, none of them are really super great. Uh, there probably are about two to watch out for, and that's Pinamon and Bibimon. Uh, Pinamon's just generically good. Uh, green has all these really generically good effects, but their Digimon typically falls short of the power level that we're looking for. Um, but in sealed, they really shine because you get all these generic effects on any color. Uh, this one is if um, if you attack an opponent's Digimon, trigger draw one. Drawing is very powerful in sealed because you need to be able to find your combo pieces to be able to go up your chains and win the game. Uh, BBmon is just if you have three or less security, you gain a memory when attacking. And these are just uh, generic advantage babies. I like to call them advantage gainers. Uh, they give you a very small advantage. Uh, Kyarimon and Demi and Pagu and Suno, they're all situational. I think Demi is probably the most average of all of them. So definitely want to look out for those three. Kyarimon, Pagumon, Sunomon, they'll almost never resolve, but you're going to play them anyway because you need as many babies as you can. Uh, this Agumon's probably going to be okay. I mean, it's really only good if you pull Tai. Other than that, it's um, it's just super okay. This Shoutmon is super okay. I don't think you'll have to worry too much about Huck, uh, about the Jessmon line going into this pre-release. Jessmon itself is okay. If you pull Sistermons, and then you have to see Sistermons. So it definitely won't be consistent, and it won't have to restand. Uh, this is a Digimon I really wanted to talk about. Osiramon. This is going to be your only Blitz Digimon, I believe, in the entire set. So it can be a really good finisher. You take all their security, then you just drop, you just digivolve into a Saramon, and you just win the game. Really good card there. Uh, Megadramon, also pretty good. Uh, the effect doesn't really matter. What we're looking at here is the Inheritable, that it gives your Digimon plus 2k, so you just make a really big Mega that can swing. And there's a lot of really good common level Megas. Speaking of uh, lower rarity Megas, uh, Magna Kidmon is a really good Digimon for this format. Uh, he, not only does he let you play option cards for free, uh, but if you don't, which 9 times out of 10 you're not going to have it, you could just delete a little uh, 4k or less Digimon. This is a very, very strong card for Sealed. In Sealed, there is three things you always want to look for. That's removal, that's bombs, and that's consistency or draw power in some people's triangles. Uh, this does all of those things, mostly because Digimon cards always draw when you Digivolve, but the fact that this is a bomb in and of itself, it's 11k, it's got security plus one, it does a lot of damage, it hits really hard, and it's removal on a body. This is a, such a good card, and it's very easy to get because it's only a rare. Obviously, um, I'm probably not going to talk too much about the SRs, the super rares, and the secret rares for this set. They're if you pull them, you're obviously going to play them because most of them are really, really strong. Um, but there's no really reason to talk about them because if you pull them, you're obviously going to play them. But there's definitely a debate for a lot of the rare and common uncommon stuff. So this is just to enlighten most people on really good cards. Uh, obviously, the common Betamon, this is going to be really good. Uh, there are not a whole lot of tamers in this set. Definitely, these there's a lot of good ones, but it's kind of hard to pull these tamers since most of them are at the rare slot. So getting uh, Madoki Betamon is just really good because he can prevent your opponent from gaining advantage off of a lot of these memory cards because there are a lot of Digimon in the set with uh, memory gain abilities. 
So being able to shut that off is also just really, really good. Uh, Strabi Mom was another one I wanted to talk about. Uh, this isn't going to happen too often, but um, there are plenty of hybrid cards in this set. Uh, especially because you have the green hybrid stuff, you've got the blue hybrid stuff, the red hybrid stuff. There's definitely enough hybrid stuff that this could work. So it's definitely a good consideration to put in your deck to be able to gain a memory. Uh, Gabumon, this Gabumon has the same problem as the Agumon. It's just not good. Um, I guess I'll take this time. Let's go ahead and talk about Vanillas. Um, Vanillas are really, really good in Sealed. They have good stats for their cost. And in Sealed, you're not so worried as much about removal as you are in Standard. Standard gameplay? Like, you would... I know this card is really good in general going into the new format. But for the most part, most people would only play a couple of Vanillas because they... They're just good stats for what they cost. And unfortunately, in Standard, you need a lot of effects in order to gain advantage over your opponent. In Sealed, it's a little different because you need to fight for board presence and, cons and be consistent in how you go for game. So Vanillas give you a lot of value, and they just make it so that it's a lot harder for your opponent to gain that advantage because you're always threatening to swing over their stuff. Octomon is, in general, just really good anyway. But, yeah. Uh, this is an okay Digimon. Uh, when attacking, you gain a memory. It does cost 3 to evolve for a level 5, but, I mean, you know. It's really good if you just evolve into it to pass the turn, and then you, like, field it and swing with it. You just gain more memory. Uh, this was one I was really looking at. Uh, Dragomon. Uh, when you Digivolve into this, you can return one of your opponent's level 4 or lower Digimon with no Digivolution cards to its hand. Hard casting happens a lot in this format because your deck is not going to be as consistent as your regular one. In Sealed, you have to play with what you pull, so it can be very hard to find a line to go all the way up, especially when you need to be consistent. Um, this card will make it so that it punishes your opponent for hard casting and just gives you more advantage. I think this is a uh, really good card because it does its removal, and you always want to be looking for removal. Um, I did want to talk about this Majiramon a little bit. Uh, this card's okay. Uh, when you Digivolve, you trash a Digivolution card from the top. That's probably terrible in this format. It's really good in Standard. It's probably terrible in Draft because most top-end uh, Digimon aren't going to have a whole lot of things. And uh, But it, this one does if is, does punish your opponent for, have, for hard casting because it does allow your Mega to attack twice if it doesn't die to security. And there are a lot of cards that kill Digimon and security in this format. I don't think the security is going to be super huge, but it's definitely going to be enough that it's going to be a problem. Uh, Tinkermon. On deletion, one of your opponent's Digimon gains security attack minus one. I really like this Digimon. I will probably play it if I pick it up. Should you play it? Probably not. Um, it's got terrible stats for its cost, and to be fair, this effect isn't super great, um, but it does have its niche uses, and there are a lot of circumstances in Sealed when you really have those niche uh, circumstances. Uh, this is a really good card right here. Uh, this is Baluchimon. It has on play, if you have three or fewer security cards, you basically just pot agreed. Pot agreed on a body. Uh, need I say more? You just draw two, on play... I'm, you're probably never going to evolve this thing, but this card is just so, so good. <laughs> I don't think I ever need to explain how, how good a draw to is. In sealed drawing is probably one of the most important things you ever have to do. Uh, this is one I was looking at, Babamon. Uh, it's, there are no Rosemons in this format, so you're not going to be able to play a Rosemon off this. Um, but two yellow level threes... Now that's something we might be able to pull off. Uh, anything that just plays more Digimon is always going to be good. Obviously Crusadermon exists, but um, for a sealed format, this card's pretty good. It's not very strong, but like if it dies, you don't really care because you can just hard cast uh, regular stuff. And it just doesn't matter. Uh, this is going to be a massive threat. Uh, Skull Mammothmon is very, very good for sealed. Uh, it's a blocker. You are not going to have many blockers, except for your Andromon promo. Uh, every BT6 pre-release is going to have that Andromon promo come with their kit. 
Uh, it's uh, ultimate level blocker. It's pretty good. Or yeah, but this I don't know why this is ultimate. This is a mega, but um, this is just a blocker. And then if you have three or fewer security, it gets two thousand. So this is a thirteen k blocker. Last set, Boncho Golemon was a 13k blocker, and it was destructive in pre-release setting. It was very good. And this also does not um, lose memory when it swings, like a lot of the little blockers do. So you can swing in for lethal later on. So this is probably one of the biggest cards you want to pick up to order to get your wins in the pre-release. Uh, moving on from there. Uh, Dynasmon is also going to be a, a huge threat, but like I said, not really need to talk about the super rares. You're obviously going to play the super rares. Uh, Bakomon is another really good card. When attacking, if your opponent has two or more suspended Digimon, gain a memory. Uh, if your opponent has two or more suspended Digimon, you are probably in a really bad spot because your security failed you and they lived. <laughs> but uh, with this card and the inherited effect, it basically just rewards you for being able to win back your board state. So this is a very, very good rookie for a pre-release setting. Moving on from there. Uh, yep, this is just another vanilla. Uh, I guess this is probably a good time to talk about um, the Eosmon stuff. I think there are two good Eosmon cards besides the Super Rare, which is the Mega. Uh, this is the first one. Uh, just a little rookie that um, on deletion you reveal the top five. You look for the Tamer or just another Eosmon. Uh, any kind of search effect that you can get some kind of consistency with is going to be very good. So you can run, this will fetch any Eosmon. So you can put as many Eosmon in your deck as you want, or as you, as many as you pull, basically. And this will just be more consistent. It's like last set with the Karamon, where you could look at the top for a, uh, it was either a Virus or a Diaboromon, I'm not sure. But it was consistent enough, because there was enough stuff in that set that you could play that card and not whiff on it. Not like Strabimon or uh, whatever the flame, Agunimon baby is that looks at top three for a Tamer. It was a very inconsistent card. Um, there's an uh, We could talk about these for a second. Arbormon and Petaldromon are basically your Lobomon and um, Kendo Garurumon for green. Uh, there are no green Tamers in this set, so you are never going to evolve a Tamer into one of these because... Um, the I don't believe the Digivolution requirement does not apply to Tamers because this is an effect. So you have to evolve on a Green Tamer. Um, Petal Dramon is probably good to play because it's the uh, it's one of the only it's the only Digimon in the set with piercing. Uh, well, that's not true. Jessmon has piercing, but you have to play a Sistermon to get it. Um, but this card is just a pretty good card because it allows you to fight back for board and get security checks. Um, Entmon is another good card. Uh, just when this Digimon deletes an opponent's Digimon and survives, you can unsuspend it, so you can really, really fight for board presence with this. This is a huge threat to your opponent if they don't have a Mega. Uh, then the both the Megas, because both green Megas are the rare slot, um, but this uh, Eldrodimon is really, really, really good card. Uh, not only can your opponent not reduce this Digimon's DP, so against the yellow stuff, this is really, really good. But um, it has security plus one on a 12k body. So this thing does not go down easy, and it swings very hard. There is not a lot of checks to this, especially if you can get decent inheritables on it. And I think Eldrodimon might just win you games, because Black War Greymon, or yeah, Black War Greymon, Last set was a really good card that almost did the exact same thing. Uh, Ancient Troy has to be talked about. This card is insane. Uh, this effect, when an opponent's Digimon attacks, suspend up to two of their Digimon without blocker, is not once per turn. It is literally just whenever your opponent swings. So you can basically hold your opponent down while you regain advantage. Um, and also it has, on deletion, you can play a level 4 Digimon with green. High, basically you can play a hybrid from your hand. Uh, Petaldramon and Arbormon are your only targets for this, but they're not hard to pull, so you should be able to get it pretty easily. I think this is a card to look out for, because it can slow down a lot of decks. And can win you back the advantage you need. Uh, moving on to black. Uh, Junkmon is the first black card we're going to talk about. Um, it's just an on-deletion gain of memory. Good inheritables, you can't say enough about them in this format. 
Uh, there's not enough, and any advantage you can get, you want to take. Because it can be the difference between you winning and losing. Chikurimon. Uh, it's a security Digimon. What else do I need to say? Um, you're going to play this if you see it, because it has a security effect. There's no reason not to run this, because it just gives you advantage for no reason, basically. And it's a free evolve. If you have to hardcast it, you have to hardcast it, but you're probably never going to hardcast it. Just a really, really good card. Uh, Nannymon's the same thing. It's another security Digimon. If you pull it, you're probably going to play it. Because if you hit it in security, it's just cool. Uh, this card is terrible otherwise. It's a play cost 3 for a 2k. This thing dies to everything. <laughs> but it is a level 4 you could play for free, theoretically. So the advantage might just be enough that you want to play it. Uh, Deputy Mom was something I did want to talk about. Um, this Digimon can Digivolve into any three Musketeer Digimon uh, for a memory cost of six, ignoring its Digivolution requirements. So you can theoretically turn this into a Bealstermon, a Gundramon, or a Magna Kidmon, like we talked about earlier. Uh, basically for six. And uh, I don't want to underestimate that, especially since on play you could basically search it. <laughs> you can reveal the top four to look for the three Musketeer card and an option. So, a Deputy Mon might actually be probably one of the biggest bombs in the set, especially if you pull a three Musketeer Digimon. Um, because you might just win the game um, in, like, three or four turns off of this one card. And that's just kind of crazy to me. Uh, another Digimon. Uh, Gigadramon is the same thing as the red one. It's just it counts as red and it uh, gives uh, DP. It's just a good card. Uh, let's talk about Mamemon. This card is pretty good. So one of your one of your it has decoy. I don't think decoy is gonna matter because the likelihood of us having another black Digimon that we care about is kind of irrelevant. Um, that on deletion though, that's pretty good. Uh, delete one of your opponent's Digimon with a play cost of seven or less. I know this is an SR, but I did want to talk about this because this card is just a very very good card. It meets all the criteria. It's got draw. It's got removal, and it's a threat. It's, well, it's a bomb, no pun intended. That's just a good card. Um, in case anybody was wondering what Gundramon was, this is another one of your three Musketeer Digimon. Uh, it's just a big blocker. And uh, this one Digivolving thing will probably never resolve, but it does It does the same thing that uh, Magna Kidmon does. So it's removal for a play cost four or less if you don't get an option, which we probably never will. And it's a limited K blocker. Very good Digimon. Blockers are going to be so underrated. You will be shocked at how much they do. All right, let's talk about Pile of Volcamon. Uh, this card is going to be pretty good. Uh, it's got Reboot. And it also has, um, when one of your other Digimon is deleted, trigger D Digivolve 1 on one of your opponent's Digimon. Uh, so it can swing. It won't die, and it'll restand, and it'll be really, really good. Reboot is a very, very good mechanic. Uh, here's another really good Digimon, speaking of that. We have Elecmon. It's a 4-cost 2k that on deletion delete one of your opponent's level 3s. Uh, just good anti-level 3 stuff. Uh, it basically forces your opponent to play higher cost stuff because they're not going to play a rookie into this because you'll just swing at their security. This thing will die 90% of the time and they'll just lose the advantage they gained. Pretty good Digimon indeed. Um, I'm not a huge fan of a lot of the purple stuff for pre-release, uh, mostly due to the fact that a lot of it requires you to discard stuff or trash your own cards in order to gain advantage. I think that this um, Super Rare Skull Greymon is really good, uh, mostly because it gives retaliation to a Mega, which you cannot underestimate the power of retaliation on a Mega in this format. It's it's good in standard. It's broken in in a pre-release format because to in order to deal with that card and all your opponent might just have to lose the game, which is insane. Uh, there are two really good purple cards I want to talk about, though, and that's uh, Mermakusamon and uh, 
Ornismon. Uh, this is a 10k mega with Retaliate. Again, you cannot underestimate Retaliate. Retaliate cards are so good. Zambamon was a huge problem in the last pre-release for a reason. And on deletion, if you have 10 or more cards in your trash, which may or may not happen, but you can play an Ornismon from your trash without paying its memory cost. That's really good because Ornismon is another mega. And it's a doozy. So this thing is a 12k DP, play cost 12, on play, delete one of your opponent's level 5 or lower. Digimon with security attack plus 1. This card is incredible for this format. Um, I would feel very comfortable playing this on turn 1 or 2. Just hard casting it. Just give my opponent 10. Uh, there's very little in this format that will kill it. I don't really care if my opponent goes up the chain. And if I pull both of them, I feel more, even more safer doing that knowing I can get it back later. Uh, the security attack plus one is huge on this, uh, mostly because there's very little this thing dies to. Um, 11 and 10k um, level sixes will probably die to a lot. 12 and 13s will almost die to nothing. It is probably is very hard for them to die to anything. So this is a very good card for that aspect. Uh, but that's all I really want to talk about purple. Uh, there's not really a reason to talk about the sister mons. Uh, if you know anything about BT6, you know how good these cards are. Uh, this one's probably the best one. Uh, Blanc, basically just on play trigger one. And uh, if you have any kind of Huckmon or Royal Knight, this gets Blocker. This is probably the only one you're going to end up playing because the other one is just kind of whatever. Uh, the other one just gains you a memory and then boosts your Huckmon or Royal Knights. So this card is probably unplayable in draft unless you're forced to run it because you can't digivolve these on anything. Like, you have to hard cast these. This one is at least playable, and this one is, like, it's so slow, and it just doesn't really do anything. Um, the only Eos mod I really care about talking about is the 4-drop. On play, you could play a white tamer cart with a play cost of 4 or less from your hand without paying its memory cost, and then your opponent may play one. The chance of your opponent having a tamer to match this is very, very low uh, with how hard they are. If you pull this and you pull the white tamer, I would probably run them both, mostly because the inheritable also does the exact same thing but without the cost. And you could digivolve this on any color in the pre-release format, so I think this card is very strong because the tamer is also pretty good. Yep, uh, the Eosmon, nothing really to talk about here. Uh, tamers, both Ty and Matt do the same thing. They're just gob they're just Bond Tamers. Um, they gain memory when you move the Agumon or Gabumon respectively out, um, but they're just whatever. Uh, they don't really have any real practical use in pre-release format, so you don't really want to use them. These are the Tamers I want to talk about, the four drops, because these all have practical uses. The TK and Kari, if, you're, if you have fewer security than your opponent, gain two memory. So when you're behind, you gain advantage. This is big. It can get you back in the fight right when you need it. And then when one of your yellow Digimon attacks, you can do, you can uh, minus 1,000 DP by suspending this. Card is so good. So good. Especially since a lot of rookies are 1K in this format. It's just very easy to get removal out when you need it. Uh, moving on from there, we'll talk about probably the best tamer in the entire set, uh, Izzy and Joe. Uh, this card is absurd. It is so strong, and I don't know, I don't really understand why they made it this strong. So at the start of your turn, if your opponent has two or more Digimon in play, you gain two memory. This is almost always going to resolve. It's so hard to play around <laughs> in pre-release, because if your opponent just gets a way bigger board than you, it's not like you have a board wipe. There's really only one board wipe in this format, and it costs a lot to play. And uh, when one of your black Digimon is deleted, you can suspend this tamer to trigger draw one. The black Digimon in this set are really good for pre-release format. You're probably going to have a bunch of them. Uh, so this getting this tamer is probably at least going to net you one win. Like The sheer advantage this card gives you is insane. Uh, if, you play, if you pull it, you're going to play it. doesn't matter what it is and any number you pull. You're going to play all of them. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about Sora and Mimi. It's an okay card. Uh, if your opponent doesn't have a level 4 Lord Digimon in play, you gain 2 memory. Uh, it's so easy to play around this in this format, because you're probably going to have more rookies and level 4s than any other card. Uh, when one of your purple Digimon attacks, you can suspend this to trigger draw 1. This is okay. Uh, it's pretty good, in a sense. 
Um, the purple Digimon in this set are not very strong, unless you pull a lot of them. Um, mostly because their effects require you to lose so much net advantage that uh, you would need a card like this or the other purple stuff in order to recover from that. <laughs> But um, in general, if you pull it, you're probably going to play it, because if it procs, it's still pretty good. Plus, you know, tamers are just really good in general. Uh, last tamer we're going to talk about is the big one, uh, Minoa Bellucci. This is probably, this is definitely the second best tamer you could pull, but it's just also just really good. Uh, if you, It's a go-to-three tamer. It's the only go-to-three tamer in the set. It's You're going to play it if you pull it. There is... You don't really have to go to three every turn in pre-release, but it's so good when you do, especially if you can free play this or get it off security. Most of the other effects don't matter. Like when you play an Eosmon, you can suspend this Tamer to look at the top three to add another Eosmon or a Tamer card. And then uh, during your opponent's turn, while you have an Eosmon in play, your opponent's Tamers don't unsuspend during their unsuspend phase. Like, I don't really care about all that, right? I care about this one line of text right here. Start of the turn, <laughs> if your memory is two or less, you set your memory to three. That is super good. Especially since there's Digimon in the set that free cast this, on top of the fact that you could get it off of security. This is probably, this is definitely the second best, because this is n nowhere near the ballpark of how good Izzy and Joe is. Izzy and Joe is just so superior to every other tamer in the game that I think this has to be a close second. Uh, we'll move on to options. Uh, option cards generically aren't very good, uh, mostly due to the fact that, unlike Digimon, you have to have a matching color in order to play these. Uh, but there are a few pretty good hits here. Like, uh, we could honestly talk about all of the... Uh, Three Musketeer options, because if you have any Three Musketeer Digimon, you get to use them without their color requirements. Uh, you delete all your opponent's Digimon with the lowest DP. Uh, I think this card sucks in this format, but uh, personally, any removal is good removal. If your opponent only has one Digimon, this obviously kills it, because it's their only Digimon, so it's going to have the lowest DP. But um, I just don't see it happening that often. Majority of the time, your opponent's going to have multiple Digimon out. So, I think the card's good to play, but I don't think you want to, like, load up on it. Um, obviously, the memory boosts are in this set. I think the memory boosts are going to be okay. I don't think they're going to be super great, uh, mostly because they are very color-specific. I think the only one that you have to worry about is the reinforcing memory boost, uh, due to the fact that it gets any card. It does not matter, and it gains three memory. This is the only memory boost that you should ever worry about. Um, the other memory boosts are cute because when they hit security, they just enter the battlefield, so your opponent has extra memory for next turn. So that's really good. But at the same time, their on play effects, like if you draw them, are terrible. And they, um, because you're probably not going to hit anything because you may not hit a blue Digimon off the Howling one. You might not get a purple thing out of your discard off the Glaive. But if you hit it, you hit it. Obviously, we have to talk about Rattlestar, because um, this card is ridiculous. It basically, for five, just returns any Digimon to your opponent's hand. And if your opponent has three or more Digimon in play, you return another one. Uh, this is probably the best removal for the format. Uh, your opponent, nine times out of ten, is probably going to have three Digimon out, just like you. So Rattlestar will essentially remove whatever you want for basically nothing, because five is not that big a price to pay. Uh, other cards, obviously we talked about this. I really want to talk about this card, uh, Acid Injection. You basically trash a security to give one of your opponent's Digimon minus 5,000 DP for the turn. I think this card is absurd. It's very, very good. Um, it, there's not a whole lot of DP minus in this set. Um, obviously this doesn't affect Eldradimon, but, uh, this card is going to be very, very good overall because it can allow you to get over something that, like, say you don't have a Mega, you only have an Ultimate, but your opponent has a tapped Mega, you can use this to gain back the advantage to swing over that card and control the board from that state. Or you can just remove stuff like Little Guys or whatever, but I, it's just a really good card, and it only costs one. Uh, Wyvern's Breath, we obviously have to talk about this. Uh, this just deletes anything. 
It's basically Gaia Force on a yellow card. Um, except Eldradimon. It does not kill Eldradimon, because Eldradimon's DP cannot be reduced. <laughs> so, that's another reason why I think Eldradimon is going to be really good in this format. Because a lot of the really good removal doesn't hit it. Um, but basically, Wyvern's Breath is a Gaia Force. There's no way to word that. <laughs> it just basically is. Um, Blasted Disaster and Tropical Venom or whatever. They're, like, super okay cards, but you're just never going to get them to resolve. Uh, let's talk about Gawalt Charmer. So this is what I was talking about earlier. This is the best board wipe in the game at this point. It deletes all of your opponent's Digimon with a play cost of 7 or less. This will wipe entire boards. Unfortunately, you have to have a Black Digimon out to play it. Uh, you probably will. Black Digimon are very good in this format. And there are a lot of them. Um, but if you have a 3 Musketeer Digimon, you can play it without meeting its color requirement, which basically means, you know, if you get a 3 Musketeer, you get this, you're going to play this, because there are going to be times when you can play it, and it's just going to be really good. Uh, Fly Bullet is the last 3 Musketeer card. Uh, you're going to play this anyway, because it just deletes one of your opponent's level 6 or lowers. Uh, and you can just uh, put it, because all these security effects basically activate them in security, so they're just really good. Really, really good. Uh, cutting Edge was okay to me. Um, if you pull a really big, you pull a level 5 Eosmon and this, I really like this card, because you could play the Eosmon without paying its memory cost, then delete one of your opponent's Digimon with DP less than or equal to it. Um, so it's just good removal if you get Eosmons, but other than that, uh, this card would be terrible because it requires you to have Eosmon. I just like the niche scenario where it might pop off. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the Seeker Rares, because both of them are really, really good for this format. Alphamon is probably the best one of the two for Sealed. Beelstar will be better for Standard. This will not. <laughs> Uh, but Beale Star is definitely a lot worse and sealed than this is. So basically, its security is at the end of the battle. You can add this card to your hand. Then if a Digimon with Royal Knight or X Antibody is in play, which there are a couple Royal Knights in this set, so you get to up to 12 of your opponent's Digimon can attack players for the turn. So it'll basically stop the entire turn. However, when attacking, you can pay 5 memory, and if you do this, Digimon gets 1,000 DP for each memory paid. And then at the end of the attack, you gain 2 memory. So no matter what, you could pay 2... Go up to 13 and guarantee get that two memory back. But if you're really worried about it dying, which at 13, there are uh, three Digimon this dies to. At 13, there's about three Digimon in this entire set that it dies to. If you pay five, though, this doesn't even die to Wyvern's Breath. The only thing this is dying to is a Fly Bullet. That's it. That's the only card. Uh, there's no other card that's going to get it. Um, there are some security effects that are going to hit it that doesn't matter. Like, obviously, the level 3 uh, Black Rookie will de-digivolve this in the security. And there's some effects you could hit. But, like, for the most part, this thing is not getting removed. It's probably, if you pull this, it's probably the best secret rare you could get for the format in order to win your pull spots. Uh, we'll talk about Bill Star. Um, this card is personally this card is terrible for this format um because when you play this card from your hand you reduce its cost by one for each three musketeer digimon card and option in your trash there is not enough of that in this format for this to be consistent um and the ability to return a seven cost option from your trash you have to pull it and uh unlike standard where there's a lot more seven drop options let's go ahead and uh count out how many seven drop options we have in this format one two three <laughs> that's it you have three and they're all on there there's two uncommons and apparently you can get it in the rare slot for some reason but man it just it's just not good it's not good at all but um i really hope that um you enjoyed us talking about this set uh, and the specific Digimon that are really, really going to be good. And I hope it helps you in your games. Uh, one last thing I want to do is I want to go over here to the pack opening simulator. And I want to show you uh, when you draft specifically, uh, you want to, you'll want you be looking for certain cards when you flip. So let's go ahead and flip here. Um, so when we look at this pack, this is a very good pack. 
We got a Elecmon, which is good removal. We got a generic level 4 that has a lot of stats. Um, we got a Dragomon, a Pinamon, uh, Chikurimon, and Deputymon. I don't care too much about the Pulsemon or the Rebellimon. Uh, the Pulsemon is kind of cool uh, because I can... Um, I can give jamming to something if I have three security or less. Or, sorry, well, I have exactly three security. My bad. Uh, but that's probably never going to happen. And the Rebellion one is kind of okay. But this was a really good pack because we look at it and we see that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, at least eight cards in this whole pack are playable. Uh, we can throw in the memory boost if we're desperate. But I don't really plan on running this because as you can see in our first pack, we only have one blue card. So the chances of us hitting it off this is very, very low. Let's go ahead and try another pack. Okay. We got a... Got an SR. Or maybe, yeah, that's that's an alternate art. That's pretty good. <laughs> Obviously those are good. Um, you may not get a baby in every pack. That might not be something that happens because they are uncommon. And there's a lot of uncommon slot cards. We got the level 5 Eosmon and the level 4, so if we get the Tamer, we're in a really, really good spot. Uh, Pangeamon, more Vanillas, more just generically good rookies. And the whole time you're doing this, you want to be like looking at how much of each card you have. How many level 5s, how many level 3s, how many like level 2s, and that way you can build your deck consistently. On average, you're going to have, you know, somewhere between 2 to 4 level level twos you're gonna have somewhere between eight to fourteen level threes you're gonna have around um eight to twelve level fours you're gonna have around six to nine level fives and you're gonna have around uh three to six level sixes and if you get a level seven which i think is impossible in this set um you'd probably have one of it at all um, tamers, you're going to probably run as many as you pull. Uh, so that's going to be uh, 0 to 3 as your ratio on that. And then option cards, you're going to be somewhere between 0 and 3 because option cards just are not very good in general because they require you to have the specific color. Uh, we'll open up one last one. <laughs> well, remember when I was talking about that combo earlier? We got the cutting edge and we pulled the level 5 in the last pack. So we have the combo. Uh, we also got Mercusmon and Eldradimon. Man, I really hope my pre-release packs are like this because these are, this is insane so far. But I'm going to end the video here. Um, if you guys have any more questions about what to do in pre-release format, make sure to comment down below and I'll be sure to answer them. And I hope you all have a wonderful day and good luck at your pre-releases. I hope everybody gets their Pulsemons.